Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rohan. I'm a third year medical student studying at Cambridge University. And in this video, I thought I'd give you a bit of a life update. Basically, I want to tell you how third year is going on. If you don't already know, basically, third year for Cambridge Medicine is our intercalation year. So actually, you don't study medicine this year and you take, yeah, you can study any other subject. And it's most common for people to choose one of the other like natural sciences subjects. So these are typically one of the subjects you might have studied in first or second year, like um, pharmacology, pathology, and I've chosen neuroscience for this year, which is what I'm going to be telling you a bit about. But technically you are allowed to do other subjects, like any subject at all. So some people, you know, do weird and wonderful stuff like theology and music or even like management. Even some people, they do like engineering and things and they have to do something called switching triposes, whereas I'm doing a natural science tripos, but um, don't worry about all that. that. That's a bit like random Cambridge details. So why I chose neuroscience was it was it was my favorite subject, which we studied last year. And yeah, I just really enjoyed the diversity of neuroscience, you know, studying right from like individual neurons all the way to like psychology and like behavior and like, I don't know how, how children's brains develop uh, at different rates and things. Um, I don't know why that suddenly came to my mind, but yeah, I, I found it really enjoyable. So yeah, I thought that studying it in more depth this year would be really fun. Let me go into a bit more detail about what I'm doing this year. So. This year, technically, if you, I'm doing something called PDN. So PDN is just a department which I'm linked to. So PDN stands for Physiology, Development and Neuroscience. And basically, any student taking PDN can take four modules. And I've decided to take four neuroscience modules. So this term, my N2 module is called Cellular and Molecular Neuroscience, and then N7, that's called neural circuits. The next term, I think N9 is all about like synaptic plasticity and neuronal plasticity, which is sounds really interesting. And so does N5, which is all about neural degeneration and repair. Um, so those are my modules, which I've taken. I'm also doing a project this year, which we'll talk about a bit later. And my project's more of a theoretical project. It's writing up a grant proposal for how you can treat Huntington's disease associated sleep abnormalities. So now, kind of to talk about how I've been finding this year and what's the main difference between this year compared to first and second year. So this year, third year for medicine is kind of referred to as the chill year because our lecture load and just the amount of content we have to learn is so much less than in first and second year. So to put it in context, I probably only have about seven lectures a week. Um, and this is compared to first year and second year where we probably had maybe 12, so minimum two a day. And we'd also have on top of that three or four practicals a week. And then we'd also be writing like three essays a week. And in this year, it's, it's a lot less structured in that each lecture, it's not as useful as first and second year. That sounds strange, but basically the lecture content isn't as examinable as in so in first and second year you get these pretty detailed handouts and all the exams questions will be based on those handouts whereas this year you don't get handouts which is kind of hard to adjust to but um, you only get the lecture slides but you get a list of references at the end of each lecture and basically each lecture is just like an introduction to the literature in a very specialized area so i don't know about g protein coupled receptors we had a whole lecture just on how they dimerize and then you have a list of like 10, 20 papers, which the lecturer um, recommends you read. And you're not really expected to read all of them. You're just told, read what interests you and go with the flow. So it's a lot less structured and it does offer a lot of flexibility. So one thing, because my timetable has been a lot freer, that I've been able to do a lot more evening activities um, with like church and CU, like pretty much every evening is going something related to that or just hanging out with friends so that's really good because in first and second year you had just so many supervision seats week in the evenings it was really hard to like 
actively spend time with people um, because it'd always be clashing with one of our, our supervision classes. Um, so that's been awesome. And in fact, I, te I, I always say this to like first and second years and they just look at me in horror in that we don't have any scheduled supervisions and we don't have, no one's forcing us to write essays. Like literally, if we want a supervision, we need to go and email the lecturer going like, hey, thank you for the lectures. Do you mind if you give us a supervision on this? And um, yeah. Even, even like essays, no one's forcing us to write essays, like our director of studies, like he said a rough guy, try to do six essays this term. So I'm trying to force myself to do one a term, uh, sorry, one, one a week. Yeah, it's, it's really weird just trying to self-motivate myself to do it. And then, and then you just email one of the lecturers with your essay going, hey, I'd really appreciate uh, some feedback on this. So it's a bit less unstructured and you can kind of do what you want. For some people that's really liberating. But it's also kind of challenging in a way because, I don't know, I feel like my study, my workflow is so used to kind of first and second year just processing lots of content that kind of deciding to my, for myself what interests me and how much work I want to do. That's kind of weird because, you know, you can't read all the papers in the reading list and you can't write an essay for every specialised area of the course. Like, it's very much up to your interests, which is strange. I don't know, it's really easy I find when you're just reading papers just to go in a rabbit hole of something but then kind of miss the bigger picture. So yeah, that's been kind of challenging to adapt to but you know, I'm also taking advantage by engaging in more like social stuff. Another thing about this year is our exams are open book. So that also, <laughs> I know, it's pretty shocking but that also adds a spanner into the works of how I actually approach because so it's open book so we can access like any lecture slides or papers or notes that we've made during the year during the exam so in a way that kind of negates one of my biggest strengths which was memorization memorization and using these like effective study techniques to take on large swathes of content fairly quickly so it's very much like trying to i'm kind of worried in a way because i feel that that everyone's essays will just be a lot better now. So I'm not sure if that means I need to read a lot more if I want to get a good mark because, you know, everyone else has access to the internet during the exam. So yeah, that, that's another kind of strange one. Our exams this year, they're pretty much just, um, they're all essay based and I have four exams. So one for each module and you'll have to do like three essays in five hours. So I don't think that's too bad. Oh, let's talk about my project. So, as I said, my project is about therapeutic strategies to treat hunting, uh, sleep abnormalities associated with Huntington's disease. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a strange one because because it's a theoretical project. It's just basically me reading a ton of papers about this, seeing what, what the holes are in the literature, and then trying to propose what experiment we want to do and how much money we should apply for that experiment to see if we can, you know, move the field forwards in this area. So my project supervisor has actually been good in that we've had almost weekly meetings, which is good because otherwise then I'd just keep putting off project work because they say you're supposed to have like 16 hours of project work a week you should be doing. But I feel I'm doing more like five or six, like kind of a couple of days before each meeting, I just have a massive cram on, on PubMed going like, oh, melatonin and things, and yeah. But where am I? So we're at week seven now, wait, yikes. So we're almost at the end of Michaelmas, but I think it's not going too bad. We had, last week, my project supervisor wanted us to give a presentation on all what we've read so far. And basically she seemed happy with the background reading, which I've done, and now, She's very much like, okay, choose your three main hypotheses and let's see what experiments we can design. So we're coming a lot closer to how we want to take our final product, which is the grant proposal. So that's good. And for those of you who are interested in like what I'm interested in this field, that I feel that I'm kind of interested in how we can use melatonin, which is like a sleep inducing drug to potentially treat sleep abnormalities in Huntington's disease. It sounds pretty obvious, but actually it's pretty complicated because no one really knows what's happening to melatonin levels in Huntington's disease patients. 
And again, no one really knows how melatonin actually changes your sleep structure, so the difference between REM sleep and NREM. Um, anyway, I won't bore you because I bored my project supervisor. I, I started talking for like over half an hour in my project presentation. Then she's just like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> so yeah, it, in a way it's kind of hard to motivate yourself because you know, it's just a theoretical project and the likelihood of this grant proposal actually being used is pretty slim because it's pretty hard to get funding for these types of studies. That's a project. And then let's talk about how the modules are going and how I'm enjoying neuroscience in general. Yeah, in general I've told people that, you know, it hasn't been as good as I hoped it would be. I don't know, it's just that compared to last year, neuroscience was a much more direct. So it'd be like, okay, you lesion like this part of the brain and like you have memory defects or it was a very more like cause and effect kind of pretty clear what was going on but they did mingle in some interesting concepts which kind of drew me to the subject which kind of fascinated me but this year it's really abstract so I don't know like particularly N7 we use uh, a lot of it is like talking about like how viable are our approaches to study neural circuits and it's a bit philosophical and then quite mathsy and creating models like um, we can model the brain using this equation and like even, I mean, it's pretty frightening how little we know about the brain. I mean, one of my friends said that, oh, we know less about the brain than we do about outer space. And even it's pretty scary that one of our lecturers, he, bless him, he's, he's such a nice chap, but he spent like 20 or 30 years working on the lamprey, um, which is like a small worm type thing. And yeah, we still don't really know how the lamprey actually moves. Um, how we can explain it in terms of individual neurons. So it makes it trying to understand the human brain pretty daunting. And yeah, it, it, it is pretty abstract. Like we'll have whole, I've spent like a whole essay like writing about a zebrafish mutant or like how a drosophilia crawls across agar. Like that wasn't really what I signed up to when I decided to study neuroscience this year. But to be honest, like I think the times where I have stuck with it and you know, just tried reading a little bit more when I do for essays. It does get interesting, but you really do have to sink your uh, teeth into it. And yeah, I don't know, in hindsight, I'm like, should I have chosen psychology instead? Because I don't know, apparently psychology has a bit of a reputation of being like one of the most chill subjects you can choose in third year. And like one of my friends only has like three lectures a week. Whereas like PDN, uh, which is what I've chosen, I has a I didn't realize this, but it has a reputation of being one of the most intense courses you can choose at part three, uh, part two with pathology. So they say you're supposed to be working like 46 hours a week, but if you think about it, if you don't include like I don't know a rest day for Sunday, that's like like <laughs> my math is gone. That's almost eight hours a day, which is I'm nowhere near doing that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of intense in a weird way because. It's just so much on each reading list, and you don't quite know to what depth to study at, so... But yeah, I guess this is just part and parcel of part two. It's less about spoon-feeding information, but it's more about... Especially like the essays, they're a lot more like about critical analysis. So how much do we know in this field? Like, sometimes you need to compare two papers which are like contradicting each other. So in that way, it's a lot more how real science works, because in real science, no one's just spoon-feeding you a bunch of facts you need to learn. It's very much, like, up in the air. And real science, you are supposed to question, like, the current knowledge base, because, you know, if you actually dig into experiments, not there's no such thing as a perfect experiment. There's always some type of flaw, which kind of stops us making the really reliable and safe conclusions that we all like to make, but basically science is not so simple. So, I don't know, it's interesting doing this for a year, but personally I don't think, you know, I think this has told me that, I don't know, a career in research might might be a bit challenging because I'm not sure if I could do this every year. <laughs> like, I am very much looking forward to going to clinical school and actually being able to apply what I've been learning to help real patients. And even if that does mean learning a lot of facts, you know, if learning lots of facts means I'm going to be a competent doctor which is going to be able to help patients then that's fine <laughs> so yeah another kind of 
weird thing is like, you know, how hard should I try this year? So, should I really be pushing all guns blazing to go for a first class degree? But I don't know, if you just think on a wider scale of things, like, this year, the difference between first and a 2-1 grade, in your overall, like, after sixth year and when you're applying for foundation year jobs, it pretty much only makes like a 1% difference. So a really marginal difference, but the level of extra work you need to do to push into that first class, like the amount of papers and like thinking you'd have to do, is a lot more. So it's a bit like, should I go for it? Should I not? Because the thing is like, if I do decide to go for it, you are sacrificing a lot in terms of how much you can socialize, how much you can, um, even things like running and things which I really enjoy doing or playing the guitar, I'm finding hard to make time. And I know that sounds ridiculous because I only have seven lectures a week. Um, but I don't know, it's just pretty time consuming, this type of, this type of learning. And yeah, I spent all of last year pretty much going like, let, let's just go for it, work insanely hard and tr let's see if I can get a first class. And I did, but this is another annoying thing because this year, the grade we graduate with this year, so basically after, after the first three years in medicine you graduate with a BA and then once you finish the next three years, your clinical school, then you graduate with an MBBS or I think in Cambridge they call it like MB cheer or something, some, some pretty stupid thing. Anyway, um, the previous two years does not count to the grade we graduate for BA, so my BA grade, or what we call tripos, is pretty much only based on this year's exam performance, which is so annoying because I tried so hard last year, but yeah, it, ma it makes me think that, you know, I need to try prioritize work-life balance as much, because even if you, if you see my Week in the Life vlog, which might be coming out, like, I pretty much spent the whole weekend just writing a Sarah Bell essay, and you know, maybe I could have gone and had lunch with some of my church friends earlier, as well as going to the evening service, I don't know, there's all these things which I'm uh, always battling, so yeah, don't think I have everything sorted out in my life because yeah, it always is a constant thing, like time management, like, I wish we had more lessons on how to manage time, especially with this year when we have so much more time at our disposal. I mean, even like this YouTube channel, like I haven't uploaded in like a month, that's like testament to how I'm always kind of battling conflicting things for my attention and my time and my energy, but anyway. That's enough random waffling. I think to conclude that, um, yes, I'd, I'd say the social side of um, third year is really good. The academic side is, you know, a little bit getting used to. Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's not. Looking forward to clinical school. So yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. It's just more of a life update. I do apologize if I use some jargon and it didn't quite explain it properly. Do drop your comments down below and I'll try get try answer your questions but yeah do remember to click the like button if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future anyway take care and bye for now